Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here today with business acceleration expert Sue Clement. She works with um, B2B service-based entrepreneurs ready to expand their visibility, increase their impact, and scale from six to seven figures. Her roadmap to revenue has assisted thousands of entrepreneurs increase their profits, reduce their expenses, think bigger, and add velocity to their business growth. As an international speaker and best-selling author and marketing expert, Sue has impacted businesses globally for the past 20 years. Previously, she grew her first business from an employment agency from a concept into a multi-million dollar company before selling it. Sue brings a real-world experience and wisdom to her clients and audience. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited and happy to be here today. Yeah. Actually, I, if I remember, we we first met, like, I think it's over five years ago or so, right? Oh, it was a long time ago. I actually was thinking about that, and I thought maybe it might have been at the kids' meetup. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Anyways, maybe. But yeah, it was. Yeah. I was speaking. I was speaking at one of those events, and I think our paths crossed there because you took photos mm-hmm. of the event. Yeah. So I think it was that meetup, but it might have been another one. Well, well, we, we I know know that we both do a lot of, of networking, um, especially when when we can when, when uh, it doesn't affect other people's health. As it seems, it, things seem to have gone uh, recently that. Um, Hey, maybe face to face networking isn't isn't the thing right now. But uh, but in previous years, it, we we both done a lot of networking. Places, it's, it's like I know her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So um, you have tips for our listeners today um, around uh, business growth and. Yeah, you, you saw my post that you liked, and, and I thought we'd build off of that. So I want to talk about five tips to up-level your performance and your business, because actually they kind of go together. We need to get ourselves, our house, our own personal house in order, uh, mm-hmm. ourselves, that's our mind, in order so that we can impact and influence the success of our business. So it kind of is a twofer. Yeah, that's very true. When, when you clear 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 all the ways success just seems to come down the road, right? Absolutely. So should I jump in? So let's jump right in here. Okay. So the first the first tip, and some of these, I know everyone's going to, or many of you might go, oh, I've heard that before, I know that before, but I still want to just do it as a reminder, and, and I kind of look at these and I think, oh yeah, there's always an upper game, an upper limit for me to keep moving forward on that. And so the first tip was to be more decisive. You know, uh, we need to make decisions rapidly, and I and I think that where we get stuck is people often get stuck because they want to get it just right. I know I do. You know, I want to have it just perfect, just right, just controlled. All you know, all my ducks in an order. You know, in line before I make a decision. But actually, being more decisive, I find that the successful people that I work with is that the ones that are more successful are the ones that are more decisive. They're more confident in their ability to make a decision. And really, it's actually being more confident in the outcome of the decision. So whether you, you know, the outcome is positive or negative, just knowing that whatever happens, you'll be able to make another decision and you'll be able to handle whatever comes your way. And so even if we don't have all the facts, Even if we're not sure of the right path, you know, and we never really can be, but the whole point is, is the more decisions you make, the better you build that decisiveness skill, the more successful you'll be. Because decisions, as I say, are kind of like trains. There's another one, or buses, you know, there's another one coming and another one coming and another one coming. So don't pontificate too long on one decision. We just need to make it and step forward. And, you know, when we shift away from looking at the problem or what might not work out well and instead, you know, look towards the result and then just recognize you can course correct along the way. So being more decisive is one of the, a real key to being more successful. Yeah. 
uh, I mean, how many times do people sit and stew over uh, what it is that they need to do rather than make a decision and, and just go in a direction, you know? Absolutely. It's the phrase that I put out there is start before you're ready. And I think a lot of people, what happens is they're not exactly sure of the outcome. They're not exactly sure, you know, we, we never have 100% guarantees that a decision or, you know, a direction we take is going to be the right one or the best one. But what happens is if we're always kind of worried about getting it right, we spend more time getting ready to get ready. <laughs> you know, we kind of spend all that time thinking, well, when I get this, this, and this done, then I'll be ready for that next big thing. And actually, we just need to, you know, be bolder, be more courageous, and believe in ourselves more so that we can step out, make that decision, and move forward from there. Yeah, that, that is a great first tip. So, okay, so let's move on to tip number two then. Number two, I like this one a lot, and that is basically always be pushing past your limitations. Always be pushing past your limitations. It's kind of like the concept of living beyond your comfort zone because that's really where the growth is going to be. If you want to up-level your performance, if you want to improve your business, if you want to grow more revenues, you're going to have to do things that you're uncomfortable with. So it's kind of a concept of getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Hmm. And I think there's another one that I've a lot of you listening out there have said, oh, I've heard that one. I know that. I, I've heard that before. And we need to hear it many times until we, we're actually living it, right? Yeah, and, and the weird thing about this, Michael, is it, it's, not, it's not like one decision, unfortunately, because we have to be uncomfortable all the time with different things. And just as soon as you kind of get a pattern or a rhythm, you think, oh, I stretched, I did this, I you know, put my neck out, or, you know, I kind of went for the gusto and it turned out okay, then we think, oh, okay, and we kind of relax. But it's like, no, you need to do it again. And if you do stretch and put your neck out and it wasn't okay, then it's like, oh, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> like, you know. So it's, it's an interesting thing because it's an endless one. We have to kind of build that, you know, I'm going back to the, the, the uh, being more courageous, being braver, but we have to build that boldness and the belief in ourselves that regardless of what happens, we can handle it. And that's tough because we all have that lizard brain, and that lizard brain is there to keep you safe. You know, that primal brain that we have is there to keep us safe. And so we're constantly trying to fight that, you know, the levels, you know, the levels of your cortex and your brain is that you, you want to be safe, but actually you have to be willing not to be safe. You have to be willing to risk, to, to stretch your limitations, to really make the biggest impact. And, you know, getting comfortable with the potential of failing is is really is really key and being able to embrace that, you know, being willing to embrace the uncomfortableness, the stretching of it, the reaching out is more important than embracing the fear or the potential feeling of loss. Right. And, you know, and I often think, like, if you remember back, anytime we start something new, like, it seems the mindset is so cavalier. And I love that because I, I talk to a new business owner and they're like, oh, I'll go do this and I'll go that. And they seem so risk, you know, intolerant. Like they just, they just get out there and they do anything. And if it doesn't work, they get, pick themselves up and they go do it again. But unfortunately, I think that over time, we think that we should get it right and we're supposed to get it right. And then we get our image and our, you know, thinking, well, what will people think if I try something and I fail? And so over time, I think it gets harder to have that rookie mindset. It gets harder to kind of be able to stretch and we can't almost, you know, get to the point that we can't afford another failure, so we're afraid to risk. And really, you know, we've all heard this, there's hundreds and hundreds of excellent quotes about embracing failures and, you know, what if we thought of failure as really success, you know, because the more often you fail the more you are stretching past your limits. The more often you fail, the more you are reaching out for bigger wins. And, you know, the more you reach out for a bigger win, chances are just the odds of the numbers, you're going to get bigger wins. But if you never reach out, you're never going to get them. And so, you know, when we think about it, we kind of have to shift that thinking away from being fear-based 
and instead look at it as saying, hey, if I fail today, that means I'm closer to success, but it also means I learned something more, and I will be more successful going forward. And it's, it's really kind of a, a challenge there is that we have to recognize that the more we challenge ourselves, the more growth we can have, both inner and outer, in the sense of ourselves personally, but also in our business perspective. So pushing past your limitations is really key. And one of my favorite books that um, uh, I use a lot with my clients is called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And it talks about how to get past that upper level. You know, we all have these comfort levels. We all have this, you know, comfort zone. And when we think about money or success, we all have a level that we feel comfortable with. And it's if you really want to continue to grow your business and get past that, it's always about up-leveling yourself. And that's a great book. It really has some cool steps about how to really take yourself to that next level. Yeah. So um, I'm going to th- throw this out there. As um, the business owners and... Um, hopefully we're striving to become like the, the leaders in, in our industries and everything. The, if we if we aren't up-leveling ourselves, then those who are looking at us won't try to keep up-leveling. Is that, is that a true concept? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, when we up-level ourselves, we often actually up-level our peers or friend base as well. I, I, I think it was... Um, Oh, the name escapes me in this moment. I have to laugh myself. I I kind of get Alzheimer's around names. The woman who started E Women Network. Why do I not know her name in this moment? But she always says, "You never want to be the smartest person in the room." Mm-hmm. And it's true. We want to, you know, when we start playing, and I said playing in the in kind of a general terms, but when we start hanging out with people who are doing bigger things than we are. It's an easy way to help us up-level ourselves, too. You know, there's also a thing is you'll earn as much money as the five people that you most frequently associate with or surround yourself with. And that's why I belong to, you know, I've always belonged in a coaching program. I've always had a coach, I mean, for the last 20 years. And, and I belong to a high-level mastermind. And, that you know, I'm, I'm working with, and I shouldn't say working with because I don't work with, but I connect with in, our, in my mastermind with some people who are, like, hitting a million-dollar businesses. And, you know, when we start playing at that level and we're connecting with people at that level, um, it, it's, there's an amazing thing that happens. Our clients upgrade, we upgrade, and it really is a way to stretch yourself and also improve your clients. And, I, you know, I love working with clients, and I love working with great clients. And so I think that the more that we invest in ourselves, we'll bring better people along the journey with us, people who also want to up-level. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, um, I, can't, I can't think of, uh, of her name either because I, I believe... Sandra, it. Sandra. That's right. <laughs> I, like, I know this woman. I've known her for 20 years. It's like the name is gone. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And Sandra. Oh, thank goodness. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Our brains are finally working. <laughs> so what would tip number three be? Number three, and this is, I mean, I, I love these all, but number three is actually to be ruthlessly focused. Mm. Ruthlessly focused. You know, once we're decisive, once we're stretching ourselves, we need to be focused, you know, really keeping the end in mind, and remove distractions. There are so many distractions. I mean, <laughs> before they talk about the goldfish is having like 11 seconds, and I think now the attention span of us on online is like seven seconds or something foolish like that. I don't know if it's totally true, but we get hung up with so many distractions so easy, and it's really about subtracting things from your day, from your life, subtracting things so that you can be more focused on what you need to be. You know, my dad... Um, was a has, was a business owner, and I remember decades ago him sharing the story with me. I'll just share it with with you now because it, it resonated so well for me, and I use it a lot with myself and my clients. It's like, oh, that makes more sense for me now. So here's the story. So I remember Dad saying to me, I was complaining that you know I had so many things to do. This is back like in the '80s when I had a job, um, and lived in Edmonton with my family. And so, you know, Dad said to me, well, when your goal is to drain the swamp 
and I'm going, what swamp? <laughs> you know, your goal is to drain the swamp, and you got your, all your tools and your gum boots on and whatever, and you head out into the swamp to drain it. But all of a sudden, you recognize there's alligators in the swamp, and you've got alligators chomping at your ass everywhere. And so he says, what, you end up, what do you end up doing? And I'm like going, well, you fight the alligators. <laughs> you know, like they're coming right at you. Of course, you're going to take care of those alligators. And the end result of that is that we become the best alligator wranglers going. And the silly thing is we're there fighting all these alligators, and we forget that the purpose, why we were even in the swamp, was to drain it. And so we lose sight of the bigger picture. We lose sight of our goals. We lose sight of our plans so easily. We surrender them without even knowing that we're surrendering them. In the moment, we're just like becoming the best darn alligator wranglers, and we're completely forgetting that it's a swamp that we're there to drain. And I think we do that in our businesses and in our life so easily. We get sidetracked so easily. I mean, I know it's a fierce, you know, a fierce challenge for me every day that I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do these three things. I always believe in the power of three. You know, pick, you know, one, two, or three things because you really can't focus on too much more than that. And I'm going to do today. So it's like I start that, and then all of a sudden, you know, this happens, that happens, that happens, this deadline comes, whatever. And before you know it, at the end of the day, those big, three big things didn't get done. Only half of them got done. And it, it's because we're not ruthlessly focused. We really have to think about what can we subtract? How can we define you know, our day, how can we hold true to the clarity of what we want to do? So if you want to make more money, then you need to make sure that everything you're doing is pointing you in the direction of making more money. And that's really a key thing. I know a lot of business owners, my clients, and I'm talking with them, they're, you know, stressed out. They're doing all these things. And I'm like going, well, none of those things are really in alignment with what you said that was most important to you to accomplish this month. And so we have to be ruthless about this. We have to be aware of it. We have to have that kind of meeting with ourselves and saying, am I on track or have I lost sight of the goal? Do I, you know, am I kind of getting sidetracked by alligators, squirrels, and shiny pennies? And those are the things that are keeping you away from that mastery level where you really will up-level and grow your business. Wow. I, 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 I've heard the, the squirrel, the shiny object, the alligator one is, is, is a new one, mm-hmm. but it, that, may, that, that makes perfect sense. That if we're too focused on the alligator biting us, then we can't accomplish what our, what our original purpose was. Yeah, I think one of the things, too, is we have to recognize that we need to focus on what we can control. Mm-hmm. And not what we can't. And so a lot of our time is spent on things that, you know, our time and energy, let's add that to the mix too. We spend our time and energy focusing on, you know, things that show up. And instead, we really need to think about, are they controllable? If they're not controllable, then what the heck are you wasting your time on it for? And when we focus on what we can control, and frankly, the bottom line is, what we can control is ourselves, our emotions, our reactions, our actions, how we want to move forward. So you have to become relentless about controlling what you're focusing on. And if it means that you set a timer, you know, we have these wonderful phones that beep all the time, you know, set a timer and just kind of do a check-in once an hour and think, well, this last hour, was I on task or not? Did I do the things that I needed to do to grow my business? Did I do the things that I needed to do to really make a difference to step up and step forward? And if I didn't, well, what was I doing? Oh, I was thumbing through Facebook. Well, that was a bit of a time waster. You know, you have to really think about this. You know, I hung out on the phone for with a friend or I, you know, went and made soup or whatever you, whatever you do during the day. You know, we come across things we maybe find ourselves less likely or less wanting to do and suddenly we get easily pulled off or easily distracted for something that seems a little bit more pleasurable. And we really have to hold the course of doing what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, if we're really going to make the impact in our lives and in our business. So always ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now taking me away from my goal or moving me towards my goal? And then change your decision about what you're doing based on that answer. Excellent. That is a a really great tip. Okay, so... Let's move on to the next one. Number four, 
and this is, you know, this is a little bit of relief. Get help. <laughs> That's number four tip is get help. Um, you know, and, and if you're thinking from a business perspective, there's two different layers of getting help. Uh, no, I'm not talking about getting therapy, although maybe that could help, but actually I'm talking about getting help in the sense of if you own a business, run it like a business. You're not the business. This is one of my CEO strategies is you are not your business. And a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, where a lot of a lot of people are solo entrepreneurs, they might have a maybe an assistant or a virtual assistant or something like that. But ultimately, we tend to identify ourselves with the business, and we think that we are the business. And my point of view is, stop thinking that you are the business, but instead think of yourself as the leader of the business. Whether you you know think of a CEO or think of a manager, whatever title you want, a founder, whatever you want to call yourself. But ultimately, that CEO mindset is that you own a business. So you're separate from the business. And when you pull yourself apart from the business, you can be you know, more decisive and, and shrewder about how you handle your, your company, how you handle your business. And one of the things, too, is to really up-level is to get help. As business owners, we don't have to do it all, and nor should you do it all. And this is the biggest thing I know. People go, but, 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 but wait, Sue, I can't afford it. Well, you sometimes can't afford not to outsource and when I say, you know, outsource, whether you hire someone or contract someone or outsource someone or get someone on Fiverr or, you know, <laughs> Craigslist or wherever you, you get people from. But the point is, y- you know, you don't want to do it all alone and you can't do it all alone if you truly are going to up-level. We're talking about how to up-level your performance and up-level your business. Well, if you want to do those things, is that you need help because there will be a capacity issue. You will run out of capacity at one point. And when we run out of capacity, that means we stifle our growth. We become the bottleneck of our business growth, and we can't get past that. And then we hit burnout, and then we don't fall in love with our business anymore, and it's a you know, slippery slope of where we go. But ultimately, you want to be able to build a support network. So I said that there was two ways to get help. One is to get people, like build a team who will do the performance of the, 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 the tasks that either you don't love doing or you're not good at doing or that it's more efficient and price effective for someone else to do it at a lower price point than your hourly bill rate. And then you go do the high-yield activities that are really going to bring them the money in the business. But the other side of it, aside from getting you know, a team and building workers to help you, is also getting help by getting mentors. And this is where you know, I really feel it's a shortcut to your success is when you can reach out and build a team of whether it's joining a mastermind program or getting a coach or having a network, work, network with a few of your really solid friends who are moving forward in business. You, know, you don't know it all and nor do you need to know it all. But you be if you surround yourself with really smart people, and this goes back to Sanders thing, don't be the smartest person in the room. If you surround yourself with smart people, you'll find that you'll up level and you'll be able to earn more, make more, and grow your business faster. You know, I know that from coaching mortgage brokers in the past, I've coached quite a few of them, but you know, and this almost goes for almost any business, but them specifically I have some stats and results on that, is that, you know, when a mortgage broker brings on an assistant, they almost, you know, I shouldn't say instantly, because it isn't quite instantly, but quite quickly, they should be able to earn 30% more. And when you offset the cost of the assistant to the revenue generation, you're ahead of the game. And so that's one of the things that people are afraid to, you know, invest in their business by bringing on an assistant or a marketing assistant or a virtual assistant or whatever to do all those tasks, they they kind of get so used to running the business and doing everything for themselves that it's hard to delegate and to let go of that. A lot of solo entrepreneurs don't have that delegation skill set, and that's really what's keeping them small and keeping them stuck. So, you know, get help. Get help by outsourcing or, you know, hiring out or, you know, like none of us should be doing our own accounting. Let's be honest about that, our bookkeeping. There's lots of things that we shouldn't be doing that are just really keeping us from making the money in our business. But also then get help by connecting with other people who are ahead of you in the game, who, you know, you can learn new skill sets from. You can, you know, grow as they grow. And so it goes both ways, you know, as a team, but also as a connection in the sense of finding your shortcut to success because you're connecting with people who are ahead of you in the journey. 
no, you have said I don't even have anything more to <laughs> add to that <laughs> because you said it all. <laughs> There you go. So let's move on to the to, to the last tip. <laughs> the last tip is, uh, and this is probably brings it all together from my point of view. This kind of this to me is the if we're doing like a, is it Jay Leno's you know reverse numbering five four three two one. <laughs> this is the one. This is the one, and that is rapid execution. You have to become a master of implementation. And it kind of ta- it kind of bookends nicely with where we started in this journey about being decisive. But you know, you can be decisive but not take action. Well, kind of maybe not. But actually, the more you implement, the better you'll be. Uh, you have to really be prepared to implement. You know, getting great ideas is one thing, but if you don't put the idea into action, then it's never going to happen. I mean, how many great ideas? How many great books, how many great products, how many great, you know, offers that you've thought of but never really implemented? Maybe because you were afraid, maybe you weren't, you know, sure, you got stuck getting ready to get ready, whatever. But when we think of all the things we don't implement on and the losses we've had because of that, the missed opportunities because of that. And so really becoming a master of implementation is is really signature, and it is about being fearless. It is about being courageous. It is about being decisive. All of those things come into play. But if you're not implementing, you're not moving forward. You know, I um, just last week I was talking with a new client, and <clears throat> I was so excited because we had a strategy call, and we talked about some things. Mm-hmm. And it was so exciting because from hanging up on that call, she went ahead and she actually implemented the idea and the concept. She created a, a post. She created, it was actually a new program. She created a post to talk about it. She sent an email out to talk about all of it. And within 24 hours, she sold a $25,000 client. You know, and that was just from idea to concept to, to selling something in 24 hours. Now, will that happen every time? Of course not. But that was a home run for her. But really, when you think about it, we could have had that call, and she could have thought, well, that's a great idea. I'll work on it. <laughs> and taken three weeks to map out the program and another three weeks to create the marketing structure and funnel and then maybe try to launch it in the fall. You know, I've seen that happen so many times. But in this case, it was rapid execution. And it, seriously, 24 hours, she made $25,000. Yeah. based on one idea that we, we unearthed in one conversation, mapped it out quickly, and then she took action. Was it, you know, sometimes our action isn't always pretty. It, you know, I call it sloppy success. I learned that from one of my previous mentors, Alex Mendozian. You know, sloppy success. And sometimes I put things together, and they're not all formed or hatched out perfectly. But it's sloppy success, one step in front of the other. You can always tweak it, add to it, build it, finesse it, polish it, all of those things in the journey of putting it out there. And I'm not saying you put out trash. You know, some people go, well, if I just throw anything out there, you know, does it represent my brand? No, of course you want to be on brand and you want to, you know, <laughs> come up with a good program or, you know, whatever you're offering or selling. But ultimately, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect because you can perfect it along the way. But if you aren't implementing then you're losing out because the rest of the world is going by you. It's like you're stopped in the middle of the highway and cars are zoom, 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 speeding by you because other people are implementing. So think of it that way. Where are you not implementing? Where are you getting stuck in the thought process, in the developmental stages, in the getting ready to get ready, and instead not taking action? You know, think of it this way. Every action is progress. You want to build momentum. And as you build momentum, momentum builds more momentum. And that's really the cool thing. You know, I think we've all, (laughs) at least in my life I've had many times, pushed a stalled car, right? In the old days, we used to, uh, we had a, I don't know, when I first got married back a long, long time ago, we had a car and the starter kind of died on it. So we'd push start it (laughs) until we could find enough money to get the car fixed. And it was a, with a standard car, uh, you know, you push it and then you have the foot on the clutch and then you let go of the clutch. Once you get it going fast enough, you, actually you can push start a car. 
I don't know if they work to, I don't think you can do today's cars, probably too much technology in them, but in the old days we could. And, you know, so when you start pushing a car, it's really hard. It's like really, really hard. It takes a lot of effort to get it moving. But once you get it moving, you can kind of almost trot alongside pushing a car. And that's the same with life. You know, when we get in momentum, when we get actions happening, we get the momentum and the momentum builds more momentum. That consistency is really king because that consistency will keep you in momentum and it, it, it just grows on itself. Whereas if we kind of get an idea, think about it, think about it, and do it, and then get another idea, and then think about it, what happens is it's like stopping and starting that car over and over again. And so every time you go to get started again, you have to put way more energy, more effort, more more fierceness just to get it going. Right. And it gets exhausting. So momentum is key. Keep yeah. making decisions. Get into that implementation mode. And stop getting ready to get, <laughs> to get ready. But, you know, we have great ideas. Go do it. Be fearless. If they fail, so what? You, you did something. You learned something. Go do something else. We can always make more decisions. And so that's my number five tip, which I think is the most important, is really consider this. Are you implementing? And every day have a little meeting with yourself and say, did I implement today? Did I make the phone calls I needed to make? Did I do the Facebook post? Did I build the content? Did I send an email? Did I whatever? Did I implement today? And if you aren't implementing enough, chances are you're losing out on your revenue stream. Yeah. Because that's we have to do that. We have to always stay in motion to be successful. Think of like being a shark. <laughs> always yeah, in motion. It's true. Yeah, as the shark does stay stay in motion. I like your animal analogies. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, tip number five is definitely the the bow on the package. Um, it does kind of tie everything together it, it, with the other with the other four. Because mm-hmm. if you if you're constantly implementing and, and moving, then you're actually deciding you're asking for help when you're supposed to in the whole bit right absolutely you're fo- you have to be ruthlessly focused you're moving forward you're pushing past limitations because implementing can be really uncomfortable mm-hmm. let's be honest about it and you have to be decisive because that's where the you know the hard edge comes to it you have to make the decision to take the action and then you need to take the action and the action will put you past your limits it will keep you focused and yes reaching out and getting help up and down the ladder is really critical to help you move through that quicker. Yeah. So, so best best ways to get a hold of you and work with you. Oh, okay. Um, the best way to get a hold of me, people can reach out to me uh, through my website, sueclement.com. It's a pretty simple one. Or you, can, of course, can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, my um, Facebook group is called Roadmap to Seven Figures. So you can join me there. And, uh, you know, one of the things I'd like to offer, if you are a business owner and listening to this today, and if you are an ambitious business owner and really ready to up-level your business and want to scale from that six-figure, you know, you broke 100 k but now what? You know, what got you here won't get you there. <laughs> and that's, um, that's kind of, we've all heard that line before, but it is so true. And if you want to up-level yourself, um, I would encourage you to reach out to me because I offer a complimentary strategy call. And in that call, we'll talk about what's happening in your business, what's working, what's not working. We'll uncover some next steps and opportunities for you to move forward and see if and how I can help you and if we're a good fit together. And one of the cool things I've got coming up is I've started back, I'm calling it my Revenue Accelerator 3.0. Why I'm saying 3.0 is... This is a program that I've done over the last 20 years at different times, and I keep evolving it and changing it, but I'm launching it again, and it's called Revenue Accelerator, and it's a 90-day program, and the whole focus of the program is how much money can you make in 90 days. And so I'm looking for people who really want to, like, double, and then maybe double again, but at least double your revenue in 90 days. And it is through really being focused and having a strong implementation plan. So if anyone's interested in that, please reach out to me. We'll have a conversation or check me out on Facebook and or LinkedIn. And uh, I'd love to be able to support you in your journey of growing your business more successfully and easier than you are by yourself. Great. So thank you for joining us. My pleasure. It's been fun to share these ideas today. Yeah. And if if... For those of you listening, if you didn't 
get anything else out of how to contact her, make sure you go to SueClement.com and uh, sign up for for one of her programs. Um, Sue is phenomenal. Thank you. And I also have a weekly newsletter, so I always share these tips. And, of course, they also on Facebook, <laughs> our, favorite, our favorite modality of life, it seems. But, yeah, thanks so much, Michael, for having me today. It's been fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.